Hello everybody, this is Terrell from Terrell03.com and today is February the 4th, 2020 and we're having our meeting here on Tuesday night, start at 7 p.m. right on time. We've all got our, um, our, head, our headsets on and everybody's adjusted and I've been asked a question. I realized I'm answering and didn't turn on just like last week, remember? I forgot to turn on the recorder, so just turned it on right now and the question is, and this seems to be a common thread with a lot of people, a lot of subscribers, a lot of supporters. So Blue, if you don't know what that is, and Pursue Him, if you don't know what the, what we're talking about here, then go, you see that link up at the top? That's my website. If you go down there and scroll down, if you look in the left-hand column, you'll see the two, to the two uh, Gospels, the two churches, the four baptisms, all those videos. You can get a free newsletter down there. You can subscribe free to my YouTube channel have two, one's for the Project Black Star, one is for this, Seeing God's Wisdom Hidden in Plain Sight. And subscribers, newsletters, videos, this is one of them right here. So when you get the, your hands on a newsletter, one of the later ones, then we have these chat meetings, videos, and John is sending in from my radio series in 2012. We're up to 10 of those shows now. There's tons, just tons of information. And uh, now this is newsletter number 10 that's being shared we start off with the two gospels the two churches four baptisms and now the uh the lead stories they're uh determined by our questions so you guys asking questions are driving the narrative what i'm trying to share with you the one for this week is going to be is the same question that's being asked right here naji wrote and asked me want to know how uh, to explain how satan murdered adam in the infinite realm and in order to answer that question you have to understand how we are members of each other. And we are members of Christ's body whenever we obey the gospel. And then we are individually members of one another. Um, Romans chapter 12, 4 and 5. It's the last part that most people have difficulty understanding that we're members of one another. That's how it goes in the infinite realm. So all these little bits and pieces that were being given in scripture are there to help us understand where we came from and where we're going back to as gods in the infinite realm. So the uh, Simple Kathy, what is the meaning of the skins God gave Adam and Eve after they sinned? You're talking about Genesis 3:21. The verse right before that is the one that speaks of Eve being mother of all living. Okay, and so the body of Moses that I was just explaining is be baptized into, you realize that there are members of Moses' body. There are members being baptized into Moses, just like we are baptized into Christ, that we become active participants in his death, burial, and resurrection through the gospel. That's the mystery of the gospel, that we are baptized into Christ. That makes us active participants in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's how we died already. When we obeyed the gospel, we died with Christ. And it's for a man to die once. And then the judgment, right? Well, we already died. It's the mystery. Part of the gospel. So we became active participants. So to answer your question, the skins, Adam and Eve, Adam in Genesis 2-7, when he was made heavenly, Eve and her seed are in him. He's a singularity host. He doesn't have a spirit. He doesn't have a soul. He doesn't have a body. All three are the same thing. He's a heavenly creation. Okay, and then he names everything to be named. He sits down, he's bored. And then Lord God, Christ, who's the Lamb of God, the Lord God of Genesis 2 is the same as the Lamb of God. Son of God incarnate in this universe, standing in the center of the throne, in heaven, the incarnation of heaven itself, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as the Lamb of God. So when Jesus Christ incarnated on our earth, he's the incarnation of the Lamb of God. That's in heaven right now. You can read about him in Revelation 7, 17, in the center of the throne. That's where he was. That's where the garden is, the heavenly garden. Okay? So the fall, the transgression. All right? Man was not deceived. But the woman was thoroughly deceived, fell into transgression, the fall. So they get booted out, driven out of the heavenly garden and down onto the earth. You notice there's no procreation 
until they're driven down to the earth and you see that they're given skins. These skins, that's just like you're in a skin. Heavenly, before the fall, they were put down to the earthly equivalent of the garden. There's an earthly part, there's a heaven part, and there's a heaven's part. Three witnesses testifying for the original singularity, which is heavenly. Okay. So the skin, that's the reason whenever you're reading about Elijah, you're reading about John the Baptist, it's talking about the camel skins, the camel hair, the belt and all that. Those are all clues, tells, God's tipping his hand and telling you that Elijah and John the Baptist are both skins, Genesis 3.21, for Adam. Then, as you grow up and you see the types more, spirit, blood, and water, then you're going to see that Joshua is another skin for Adam too. Joshua was allowed to cross the Jordan River with Caleb, whose name means dog, type of Christ in the Gentile body of Christ going to heaven. The Jordan River being the veil that's between earth and heaven. Okay. Moses was not allowed to go. Moses was only allowed to climb the mountain and look over and see the promised land because Moses is typical of all men. Eve, mother of all living. Mo um, Moses wanted to see the glory of the Lord God. And Lord God says, nobody can see me and live. So what Lord God compromises and says, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock. The cleft of the rock is a little sliver. But the Lord God could do it. The Lord God put Moses in the cleft of the rock, put his hand over the rock. The reason that his hand is mentioned, that he's covering the rock, is because that's the same hand that pulled Moses, Eve, drawn, drew, Eve right out of the sight of Adam. Moses and Adam, I mean Moses and Eve, Moses is another skin for Eve, just like Bathsheba for David, who's another skin for Adam, Abraham and Sarah, skins of Adam and Eve, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, Adam and Eve, they are the two olive trees from Zechariah chapter 4, start at verse 11, and that, that the, uh, the writer there is, is is describing of who these people are. It's Adam and Eve, the two witnesses. Adam and Eve and the Lord God, who is Christ, are the only three begottens of the Bible. The only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, standing in, in the garden, and his two witnesses, Adam and Eve. They don't have belly buttons. They were created. That's the same two witnesses. That's why so whenever the Lord speaks of John the Baptist, he's the Lord God speaking of the man he made. Saying there's none greater than John the Baptist, born of women. Saying that uh, all the clues that the Lord God gives, who's Christ, in Matthew, about John the Baptist, he's speaking as the Lord God of his son Adam. Once you realize the types, it makes everything much more simple to see. So the uh, Adam was originally in the eternal heaven and was killed. Wait a minute. Adam was originally in the infinite realm, the infinite realm, God's realm. In the beginning, God, God's realm, created the heaven, Christ's realm, and the earth, Adam's realm. Three realms, one of spirit, God, one of blood, Christ, one of water, Adam. Those three realms make a man of God. When you turn them upwards, spirit on top, body on the bottom, it's a man. Okay, so Adam was murdered in the infinite realm. That's what required God to tell his word, to ask his word, say, word, go over there and make as heaven, incarnate as heaven, and then make Adam inside yourself again. That's what happened in Genesis 1.1. So there's a lot of things that happened before Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God creating the heaven and the earth is the reason that, the reason God had to make the heaven and earth is to restore Adam who was already murdered. The satanic rebellion happens before Genesis 1-1 in the infinite realm. All singularity hosts, all in the infinite realm. You were there, I was there, we were all there. We're all members of each other's body. When Adam was murdered, we incarnated inside of him. So you can be standing there as a god. Yeah, you're a god, but you're still there. The you that's here is an incarnation. Okay? So, the skins. 
The scans are from Kathy. The human scans that Adam and Eve were put in Genesis 3:21. That's whenever his recent incarnation began. So there were people on the earth before that. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. God, God who is, is speaking to God who was and God who was to come, Revelation 1, 8. Speaking to them, saying, let's make man in our image. Man, spirit witness, woman, water witness, seed, offspring, blood witnesses. Okay. But the, those are the Chinese. Those are the Aborigine peoples. Those also include the races that are in space. The ones that were here from the reptilian races, the amphibious races, been here for millions of years. So whenever Elijah was taken to heaven, who do you think was driving the spaceship, the chariot of fire? They're around us right now. They're waiting for Elijah to return. The last two verses of the Old Testament say Elijah's coming. Christ said Elijah must come first and restore all things. He's the prophet of Acts 3, start at 19 till 26. And he knows the people in the spaceships. And they can take him to heaven. Okay, because it's just another skin for Adam. So David, if you go to Ezekiel 34, start at 23, David is going to be installed as prince. That's about to happen. We're going to be raptured. Elijah's going to restore the kingdom. Who do you think is going to sit on the throne? David. That's what even appears, what, in Mark? What is it? It's escaping me. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. That's exactly what's going to happen. People think that Christ is coming to sit on a throne, but that's John 18, 36. He tells Pilate, my kingdom is not of this realm. That's not of this world. It's not even of this realm because his kingdom is what I keep saying, heaven, the kingdom of heaven. We're not talking about the heaven between the heavens of Genesis 1, 8 either. That's where the lamb is. We're talking about the highest heaven, Genesis 1, 1. There's a difference. We are members of his body there that obey the gospel. Peter, John, and James, those that obey the gospel of the kingdom, they're not members of his body yet, not in, he in the highest heaven. They're standing on the sea of glass. Their angel half is on the invisible sea directly behind. You can't see it in Revelation, but it's there. The types teach us that it's there. Peter, John, and James are standing on the sea of glass. On the other side is the invisible sea. Their angel half is on the far side. You just can't see him. When they go through the marriage supper of the lamb, the marriage is the man half to the angel half. That's what makes the man and the angel put them back together. Just like Eve came out of Adam, take the man, put them back inside the angel. Same thing. Water witness and a spirit witness. And then you have an eternal soul. A soul that belongs, guess where? In heaven. People think that angels live in heaven. They don't. They want to go to heaven just like you do. Angels live in the heavens, plural. They're on the other side of the second veil. You have an angel half over there that's your soulmate. It's the other half of you. It's the greater half. You're going to be joined. You're already joined with your other half if you've obeyed the gospel. It's just what we're doing here on the earth, we're ambassadors for Christ. We're being sent from heaven. Even when we're members of the Lamb's body through the day of the Lord coming up after the rapture. Okay? We're going to have an almost infinite self in, in the highest heaven, and we're going to be incarnate here as members of the Lamb's body. We're, we're going to be tabernacles so that Christ dwells in us, and then he's a tabernacle that God dwells inside of. Three witnesses. You're the water witness. Christ is the blood witness. God's the spirit witness. That's how God judges the world and the angels. That's how he's able to do it. So you're a skin of a God right now. And the thing that I, that is, uh, you're, I think you're you're asking the same questions as Naji. And she's, uh, I think it's a she. I'm not sure. No, I think Naji can go either way. <laughs> kind of go either way. So um, that's what I was writing on for the last three or four hours before I got here. Um, when Adam was killed by Satan, all the souls in the eternal heaven died. No, it's not the eternal heaven. Um, this is where I, can, I wish that I, I had all my links in my diagrams to be able to show you. Um, where Adam died the first time is in the infinite realm. That's the only realm that's real. Heaven is not real. Heaven's created. Anything that's created has a beginning and an end. 
earth is created. It has a beginning and an end. In the end, okay, you read about the end in Revelation, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28. In 27, everything is subjected to the Son. In 28, God becomes all in all. When God becomes all in all, heaven and earth are back inside of him. It's done. It's the same as in the beginning. All there is is God, heaven, and the earth. So the infinite realm, we're being restored so that we are members of Adam's body. All the members of Adam's body, the righteous part, the righteous members are going to be restored. All the, well, unrighteous part, devil, antichrist, Pelosi, <laughs> Schiff, Nadler, all those got bad guys. They're going to be in the lake of fire. And then we are going back to the infinite realm. Bad guys aren't going back. We're going back to the infinite realm, and Adam, who was killed, is going to stand up restored. And not only that, the stones that were on Satan, he had all the stones to go everywhere in the whole infinite realm. Those stones are going to be put on Adam's chest. Adam was created to be a martyr. He was created to be the lamb of God. That's what happened in the infinite realm. God's word didn't do that. God and his word are the same thing. In the infinite realm, it was because God had to keep a secret. That's the bad part. At some point in the infinite realm, God decided one day, for some reason, and this bothers me, God had to keep a secret from his sons. That's why he created Satan in the first place. The anointed cherub who covers. So at some point, after creating Satan, God had the need. He saw what was happening. Iniquity was found in him. It was then that, guess what? God realized he had the need to create Adam. Adam was created after Satan. Adam was created because of Satan. Because God had to have a sacrificial lamb. So when you read Isaiah 53, read it again in the past tense. Because it's talking about Adam in the infinite realm. The unseemly, right? That's the guy. And God put him through torture. That's what he was created for. But then, God sent, in the infinite realm, we're still there, before the heaven and the earth was ever made. God sent his son Adam to go do similar works to what you see with John the Baptist and Christ combined in the four Gospels. Preaching the Gospel, the good news and all this. These are all things that have already been done. They're being done again and again and again and again to reproduce infinite realm events. Infinite realm events, they have to be done over and over and over and over and over again. That's what's happening throughout the whole Bible. The fight between Cain and Abel being killed by his brother. Between the battle between Jacob and Esau. The righteous and the unrighteous. Cain and Abel. You see the story? The conflict? That These are reproducing things that happen in the infinite realm. Over and over again, leading to Adam's death. But that's what he was made for. Satan didn't realize that. He was tricked. Just like he was tricked here into crucifying Christ. Satan didn't understand that that's what he made Christ for. To come here. He looked like he was going to be the king. So God set it up to make him, Adam, look like a king. The new king in the infinite realm. Satan said, no way, you've got to die. But whenever Satan did that, he fell into God's trap. So Adam is the, the pill for curing the infinite realm of Satan. Satan ends up in the lake of fire because of all this. He ends up judged, cut off from the infinite realm. That's the reason for Adam being created in the first place. So the last Adam and the first Adam have to work together here as the heaven and the earth conversing back and forth. You see it most clearly in John, was it 331? Where in John's speaking, and he's speaking as the earth, and he that comes from above is above all. He's, the first Adam is speaking, and he's talking about the last Adam. Because back in the infinite realm, these are the same things that have already been done. So John the Baptist in Christ, one is the son of God, little less, John the Baptist, and one is the son of God, big S, Christ. They're the first and the last Adam, but they're both Adam from the infinite realm. I know that's kind of sounds like blasphemy. It kind of sounds like it's far out there, but 
God's word is stranger than fiction. It really is. So it's not that all the souls died in the eternal heaven. See, anything, whenever people think of eternity, when they think of eternal heaven, they think of something that is like forever and ever and ever. To the ages of the ages is what the Greeks would say. But that word eternal, that, that means something that was created that has an end. Eternal is a long time, but it's not infinite. It's not in per, per, it's not perpetual. The only thing that is in per, perpetuity that goes forever and ever and ever is the infinite realm. That's it. Heaven and earth have a beginning. They have an end. So uh, they are the first skins to exist on the earth? No. There were plenty of people on the earth. Six-day people. I get into that a little bit. The six-day people, they're the people from Genesis 1, 26 through 28. The Lord God, well, God, not the Lord God, God Almighty, created them. The Chinese, the Aborigines, six-day people. They have RH positive blood. They're a beardless, basically. If they have some seventh-day people in them, they're going to have a little bit of a beard. But we're talking about the Chinese. If you have negative blood like I do and you go to China and something happens to you, you're good luck getting negative blood. Because they don't have any. Everybody there is RH positive. You go to Korea, same thing. Japan, same thing. They've, these are ancient races that have been here for a very, very, very long time. Aborigine people, Australia. They've been here a long, 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 long time. Every single one of them is RH positive. Like the, the Native American Indian. They've been here a long time. RH positive, exclusive. The only thing is that if they have one seventh-day person in their genealogy, then they can get negative blood because it's a mix. But the, why does that happen? Because in the infinite realm, guess what they did? They when, Whenever my brethren, whenever your brethren, they go inside of you, they don't just interact with seventh-day brethren. They interact with the sixth-day people too. So the Chinese that are here, the reptilian races that are out there driving the spaceships and stuff, they are representative of something in the infinite realm. They are representative of the members of Adam's body on the day that God made them. The day that God made Adam, he didn't make him empty, formless, and void. He made him full of hosts, full of members of his body. Perfect, complete. Done. So whenever the brethren started incarnating inside of him, then the first brother said, hey, you look, you know, you're brand new. I want to incarnate inside of you. You look pretty cool. That's what we do in the infinite realm. Well, then, whenever he did that, there were already members in his body. They, we would characterize them as six-day people original members of Adam's body on the day that he was made. Then when all the other brethren start incarnating inside of him, Adam start incarnating inside of them. That's what we do there. Okay. So they're not the first skins. Everybody else, the six-day people. When Cain went to the land of Nod, the land of wanderings, there were people there. People ask all the time, Where's, where did Cain's wife come from? Six-day people. They've been here for, could have been American Indian, could have been a, a Asian, could have been, because there were people already here. They've been here for millions of years. Okay. So Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, 21 are the first seventh day people to be here. The first gods from the infinite realm. Okay. The ones that would follow, like us, members of Adam's body. People that incarnated inside of Adam in the infinite realm were gods, seventh-day people. Okay, so the, the six-day people, the Chinese and stuff, six-day people. The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God is only for seventh-day people. I know how that sounds. So the Chinese, the Orientals, everything messing around, the Aborigines, they're not called to be a member of Christ's body. They're members of Adam's body. None of them are here to be judged. They didn't have anything to do with Satan murdering Adam. They're members of Adam's body. They're, they're victims. Every one of them are victims. It's the brethren that incarnate inside of Adam that are being judged. Because they, some of them, helped Satan murder Adam in the first place. And so that was the question that Najee asked me, is how did that come about? That's the answer that you're going to read about in the next newsletter. And the way that he did it was, the, the type that we're given is the type of Herod 
and John the Baptist. Herod and John the Baptist. Herod and all, all the kings and the princes of the region, they were all there around his grand table. Just imagine that Satan in the infinite realm, and he has members of his body. All the brethren of Adam. And so Herod put John the Baptist, Adam, in the dungeon and kept him there. That's what Satan did. He put Satan, Adam in the lowest dungeon. And he beguiled all of Adam's brethren to do the same thing throughout the infinite realm. All of Adam's brethren took, just like John the Baptist, and put him down in the dungeon. Same time, simultaneously. Okay, Then you have Herod, Herodias, his sister, and their incestuous daughter, representing the three witnesses of Satan. And they conspire together for the dance, the beguiling, and then the demand for John the Baptist's head. Well, that's what happened in the infinite realm. Satan beguiled all of Adam's brethren and said, look, we're going to all pull Adam out of the dungeon at the same time, and we're going to chop his head off. And that's how Satan murdered Adam. The ones that are, and this is what came at the end of the post, and it gets me in trouble. People have unsubscribed from me because of saying this, but it's the truth, so I have to say it. What's taught in, in uh, 1 Timothy 2 about the man was not deceived. Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman being thoroughly deceived fell into transgression. Okay, so everybody wants to go on and on about Adam's sin. Whenever scripture clearly says that Adam was not deceived, it was a woman that was deceived, but you see, he came out of her. They're, whenever you put all the witnesses together, it's Adam. You're reproducing what happened in the infinite realm. But here's the kicker. Those that are incarnate here as women were deceived by Satan in the infinite realm. Those that were here as men were not deceived by Satan. We were deceived by those incarnate here as women. We're replaying these things over and over again. So the woman is told to be silent in the churches for this reason. That's why Paul says to, that the women are to be quiet in the churches. They're to receive instruction with complete submissiveness. Because we're going to break the chain of things happening over and over and over again. Ecclesiastes 1, we're going to break that chain by you just being quiet. Because in the infinite realm, you are the deceiver, you see. So, that I know how it sounds, and I'm not kidding you. Ladies that have bought my book, people that have asked me lots of questions, when I got to this part right here, they unsubscribed. <laughs> because they couldn't stand hearing the truth about that that's the way that it is. Everything in, in God's Word is written there for a reason. And everything in God's Word points back to the infinite realm, where we're gods and we're members of one another. So, the scans are meaning for the first Seventh-day people. The, those skins in Genesis 2, uh, Genesis 3:21, only refer to Adam and Eve, cast down from heaven to the equivalent garden that's on this earth, that's in the Euphrates basin of this earth. The center of this earth is the Euphrates basin, the land between the, the Nile River and the Euphrates River. That's old Mesopotamia. That's where kings lived. 48,000 years in the past. If you read Halley's Bible Handbook, you'll see a list of kings that lived more than 10,000 years, a whole bunch of them. The longest living one was 48,000 years. Because people lived to be a long, long, long time. Every time the Black Star comes, those things change. Black Star came in the days of, of Noah, came again in the days of Moses. Lifetimes went from more than 1,000 years to in the day after Noah, 120, and then 70 years after Moses. And it's going to go up again, 48,000 years. So they saw the black star come a whole bunch of times. They already had all that figured out. I know it sounds, I know it sounds like too much to be true. Haley's Bible Handbook is around page 117 or 18, 19, in the version that I had years ago. When I was uh, doing all my research, I, my mind wanted to gobble up everything pertaining to God's living word. So I was reading all those books. Um, tell you exactly what the mystery is. Uh, that was a question that was asked in last week's newsletter. And it's kind of like the Matrix. If you're a Matrix fan, and I'm a red pill guy, I'm Morpheus, you're Neo. 
nobody can tell you what the mystery is. You have to see it for yourself. The new inner man that's in you, Paul writes about it, that's the person that's going to show it to you. But I've got a pocket full of seeds of red pills. Now I'm going to show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. That that's that's what I'm doing. But um, so there's a lot of things about the mystery. If you just if you just Google mystery vines dictionary, you'll read the definition. And it's not according to like the mysterious, like the English word. It's things that are hidden that are revealed. Things that are hidden inside of God. The prophets can't see things in the Old Testament if it's hidden in God. Through the Apostle Paul, he reveals these things. Paul uses that term mystery 20 times. The books that bear the name of uh, Peter, John, James, New Testament, they don't use it one time. Because they're describing the fulfillment of prophecy. Only Paul is going to write about the revelation of the mystery. Our gospel is according to the revelation of the mystery. Our church is a mystery church. Our, the mystery is connected to our translation to immortality. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at 51. This mystery. We're not... Well, it's a little bit too late in the evening for me to try to quote it to you. My apologies. But everything's going to change in the blink of an eye. And we're, we are pushing the threshold of that happening pretty darn soon. My other investigation is the Project Black Star. And the, what caused the earth changes for Noah, what ch caused the earth changes for Moses, is coming. And it's almost here. So I've been, we've been tracking that for the last, since 2011. And uh, so we know that it's almost here. We had one seven magnitude earthquake, believe it or not. We only had one on November the 14th in 200 days. We, we, we are supposed to have one every 20.23 days. 18 7 magnitude earthquakes per year, and we had one in 200 days. Why do you think that happened? It's because of this object that's coming from space that changes things. It changes the lifespan of men. It came in the days of Moses and Noah. So it depends on where the earth is when it comes. Imagine that the solar system is like a giant roulette wheel with 365 pegs on it. See, it depends. We have a, each one of, between each of those pegs is 1.6 million miles. And depending on where the Earth is, we get a different outcome. Earth can be tipped over, geological pole shift. Earth can be flooded like days of Noah. Different things can happen. The Earth can stop and then start spinning again, like it did in the days of Moses, because of this object. And it's pretty darn small. It's only two to three kilometers in diameter it is the invisible collapsed binary twin to our sun. It comes to the inner solar system and it changes. On predestination, um, let me, um, fit on, yeah, that's the P in uh, Calvin's tulip. And, which I like Calvin, don't get me wrong, but he never did get predestination. He, did, he never got that correct. And it's a little bit difficult to explain. And I'm looking at the clock and I'm looking at the questions. So I'm going to hold that question for a second. And maybe I'll be able to get to you. Because we're kind of on the Adam and the Seventh-day people and the Sixth-day people thing. Um, if you Google my name, Terrell, and predestination, then I've written at ChristianForums.com. been writing there since 2004. You're probably going to find many posts that I've written on. If you write Calvin's Tulip. And the predestination that I've written on that topic extensively. It's the time thing that Calvin never got. There's a time differential between heaven and earth because heaven is almost infinite. The infinite realm is infinite. So if we could see into heaven, all the hosts would be like constellations. They're moving very slow motion. You'd be able to see the dragon. You'd be able to see Michael. You see the sword swung. You see the angels that the, the dragon's head's cut off but hasn't hit the ground yet. As he's falling, his tail is going across the heavenly sky, and his sons are incarnated, incarnating into this realm as the evil powers, the evil forces of this darkness, and as people like Pelosi and Nadler and Shift and the liars that we're just surrounded by, people that are ruining our lives. They're trying to. So, um, pretty difficult to explain in 30 minutes without using my diagrams and wave my arms around predestination but that's a really good question and uh, like if you were a subscriber and you wrote me that you wrote me with that question 
just like I spent three hours writing an answer today on how Satan murdered Adam in the infinite realm, then I would spend time answering your question too. So the uh, having negative blood means you're a seventh day person. Having negative blood means that the chances are extremely high. It's not 100%. I mean, you can be a Chinaman with negative blood if you're a white man or even a black man in your heredity. It can't happen. But if you're a Chinese person and all of your descendants are Chinese, then you have RH positive blood 100% every time. It's mixing together. So these people, the land of Nod, wanderings, Cain, he went and found them. Okay. All of those people had RH positive blood. They were already here like the Indians. So as soon as he started mating with them, then they started getting the opportunity to have the negative blood. The same thing when Adam and Eve's descendants, they started uh, mixing with the six-day people. Then they started spreading that negative blood. But before that, you're not going to find evidence of the negative blood. The skin, that came from the skins of Adam and Eve and their descendants that started in Genesis 3.21, which wasn't that, very, it wasn't that long ago whenever you're looking at the, uh, the history of our planet. Okay, um, do you have any thoughts on why God chose this time for the rapture uh, to bring all Seventh-day people to heaven? Oh, God's not bringing all Seventh-day people to heaven. The, the Antichrist side, the Lake of Fire side, has probably 12 times more people than the good side. There are more bad guys than good guys, more perpetrators than victims. So why did he choose this time? Well, I was trying to explain that to Naji. At the very end of all this, the end of time, the end of time happens when heaven and earth become the same thing. Heaven and earth become the same thing. Think about that. The last Adam, the first Adam. Imagine Adam has completely restored all the members of his body. Christ has fully restored all the members of his body. They're walking towards the second veil, back into the infinite realm. They're walking right side by side, side by side. As they get closer to the veil, they're looking at each other and they're smiling. And as they're walking through that veil, they become the same person. The first Adam and the last Adam, same thing. Okay, then as they're walking through the veil, the very tip of the, the back of his ankle, the very tip of his cloak, Adam and Christ, the first Adam and the last Adam, heaven and earth become infinite because they're going into the infinite realm. The very, very back part of his cloak becomes infinite in what's, what remains of the heaven and the earth. The heaven, it can't contain it because it's becoming infinite. It can only become infinite by being touched by God. God's performing this operation. But at the moment that that happens, at the very end, and that small, just little speck of the cloak in the back of, of the heel, whenever Adam becomes infinite, he goes back in the infinite realm, something happens to heaven and the earth. There's a reverberation. There's a gigantic wave that goes... <laughs> And it goes all the way back in time, all way, way, way back. That's where Elijah comes from. Elijah comes from the very end of time. And the last two verses of the Old Testament, that's the veil that he's coming through, that second veil into the New Testament. Christ saying that if you can bear it, if you can accept it, then he is Elijah who is to come. Look at the three witnesses of God. God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. Okay, that spirit witness. Prophet Elijah, he was to come. Because we're waiting. We, from the Old Testament time, Israel's been waiting. And now for this 2,000 years, we've been waiting for the day of the Lord to start because that's when Elijah comes back. He's coming from the end of time. We're waiting for him to come, for that wave to get from the end of time back to where we are now. That begins the restoration of all things. So the reason, and you read about him in Acts chapter 3, starting at, you know, when it talks about heaven holding Christ by the hand until the restoration of all things, which takes us back to Matthew 17, 10 and 11. That prophet, Moses says, he's going to raise a prophet like me among your brethren. 
And every soul that does not heed the word of that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. This is because heaven and earth is what Elijah is. He who is to come from the very end of time. That's what we're waiting for. So it's happening now because that wave coming from the future is almost here. It's going to coincide with the coming of this black star. And we're going to be taken. We're going to be pushing. The, Satan is going to be chained. We're going to be pushing the levers in heaven. Heaven's going to be restored and earth is going to be restored on earth as it is in heaven. Nothing could be restored if we were still down here. We've got to occupy the heavenly seats. That's why God extended his grace. We're not perfect. We're not deserving of what we're about to get. But God, he picked us out of all the sons to be here at this time so that he could put Christ in us and then he could dwell in us, walking around in us as tabernacles of the living God. And then he builds us up and he puts us in those heavenly places and he makes our butts fit in the chairs and he makes our arms reach the levers so that we can help Elijah. God can't do this all by himself. For God to do this all, infinite has extreme difficulty interacting with finite. Infinite. God's having to pull strings and jump through hoops to do it. First Kings. My mind is slipping on me here. First Kings. The heaven and the highest heaven. I'm sorry it's escaping me. Um, God can't, can't be contained in heaven or the highest heaven. It's impossible. Because infinite cannot be contained by heaven that is finite. It's almost infinite, but that's still finite compared to infinite. The only way that it works, I was explaining that a little bit last week. The only way that works is if God pushes that second veil. That second veil is moving around God's throne in his son in heaven like a giant typewriter ribbon. But God is contained by that veil. He interacts with everything that's going on, including his two olive trees. Well, there are two lamp stands that stand in before his throne, Adam and Eve, that are right there in front of him. That's where Jesus Christ is. He was raised above all the heavens of this realm and he's put right at God's right hand, right there. That's where that veil is wrapping God's throne. So the only way that God can interact with the finite is through heaven, through his son, right? He's contained by that veil. So he's kind of cheating to be able to do it. And that veil exists inside of you. Because Christ is inside of you, that's what Christ in you, Colossians 1, the mystery among the Gentiles, that's what it's about. Christ living in you so that God can dwell in him, to reconcile the world to himself. We preach the gospel, God's inside of you. That veil is going right around as the same incarnation of heaven in you is the, in, is the almost infinite heaven. And that's where God's dwelling. There's a purpose for all these things that I'm sharing with you. There's a purpose for it. Um, no, Calvin did not nail it, but I see Jacob left. And um, you guys are my supporters. When, whenever Pal Talkers come in, then I'm not going to be distracted. It's pretty easy to be. So, um, exactly who is taken? When you wherever you talk about the rapture, when this rapture happens, there's a rapture of the righteous and there's a rapture of the unrighteous. So, the mystery of Christ. We have our rapture. We're members of Christ's body. There is a mystery of iniquity. That's the antithesis. That's a larger body. Lots of people are going to disappear, and lots of people are going to be are going to be remaining here to go into the kingdom with Elijah. So who knows exactly how many? I don't know how many, but the majority of those that are blinded by denominationalism, the ones that are professing Christians, most of them, I'm I, I'm sad to say. They're going to, they're already in the lake of fire. For every truth that we have about the mystery of Christ, like we're seated in the heavenly places in, in Christ Jesus, that our lives are hidden with Christ in God, Colossians 3, start at 1. Well, there's a truth that's being taught about the antithesis doctrine, the mystery of iniquity. They are in the lake of fire right now. They don't know it. So when the rapture happens, we wake up in the middle of a conversation that we're already having in heaven. That's where we are right now. But they're in the lake of fire right now. They don't know it yet. Their rapture happens. Boom. They're in the lake of fire. No judgment. Do not pass go. Do not kick $200. You're already there. 
just like we're already there. We've already died. They've already died. They've already been judged. They're in the lake of fire. We've already been judged. We're seen in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when the rapture happens, we're, earth is moving at 66,000 miles per hour straight towards a veil. We're going to pass through it. And everything's going to be different on the other side. You're going to see everything that I'm telling you here is true too. So the ones that are taken are those that are part of the mystery of Christ, that obey our gospel, and those that are part of the mystery of iniquity, that we're, which almost nobody even knows about the rapture of the wicked. They just think they're going to be saved. They're going to, they're going to stay here, but they're not. They're taken too. And they are already in the lake of fire just like you are. Uh, that's where that predestination thing comes in. It doesn't work well for those that are in the body of the Antichrist are those who are here to be judged i think you mean judged yeah you're going to be judged second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10. you're not judged for your sins though that was put on christ if god didn't put our sins on christ nobody would make it so we're the ones that were chosen we were called by the gospel second thessalonians 2 right after the mystery of iniquity concludes in 12 read 13 and 14 second thessalonians 2 mm -hmm. You see that, we're, that it was by the gospel that God chose us. Sent the preacher. We obeyed. Boom. We're good guys. Those that are in the, in the, the, the reject, boom, black hats, bad guys. Lake of fire for them in Christ Jesus for us. And God makes us greater than we could ever be by his grace. We're unworthy, but God chose us. And we're not good. We don't do these good works. Um, to, to go to heaven. We do these good works because we're forgiven. Totally different concept. Then um, that's the way that it works. So, um, those whom God has called and chosen. That's right. Unrighteous should be scared. Yeah, but they're not. You think that the Pelosi's and the, uh, the Schumer's, the Schiff's, the Nadler's, you think that they're scared? They are going to continue doing exactly what they're doing, whether it kills them or not. They are like a gluttons for punishment. They're going to keep on and keep it on doing what they're doing. Hide, lying like crazy. I cannot believe the number the number of liars that come to their mic testifying, saying there were no witnesses and there were no documents. You can't have a trial without documents and witnesses. Well, of course you can't. But Schiff called 18 witnesses, and he interviewed people down in the, the basement in secret. He previewed everybody, then had his public thing, then twit, pushed it over to Nadler, where it was supposed to start in the first place in the judiciary, not in the Intelligence Committee. They did this all wrong. And the Republicans were screaming. They go, we want to call witnesses. They said, no, you can't have no witnesses. It was 18 to 0. No Republican called a single witness. Then they get over to the Senate. They, they have a half-baked case. They don't have a case. Oh, we need more witnesses. You know how many pages of documents they had? More than 28,000 documents. And they're, Schumer's up there acting like there weren't any documents. They're just liars. They're just going to lie, lie, lie. They can't help it. Sons of disobedience. They end up in the lake of fire. They're not scared of anything. They have... They are trying to murder us, spitefully use us, just like we are on the way to the cross, just like we're members of Christ's body. We're here to be spitefully used by them. That's the way that it goes for us for now. But our reward is when we pass through that veil. As soon as we pass through that veil, the Nadlers and the, the Schiffs and the Pelosi's, people are all standing up in the front. They're nobodies. These are souls that we go visit in the Lake of Fire later down the road. We have fun with that stuff. Near the end of each age, we're going to do that. We get kind of bored. You know, age is kind of long. And we start getting, you know, God can look at us and see that there's something not right with us. Guess what he does? He says, time for you to go visit those who have spitefully used you. We go into the lake of fire. It has no power over us at all. Those that are there are in agony, but not us. And we get to go through the things that they did for us. They, I'm sorry, they did against us. The spitefully used this stuff. All this bad stuff that they did. I know David knows what I'm talking about. People spitefully using him. 
I know some of what's going on with him. I've got it throughout my entire life. Cheating spouses. Um, cheating family members. Betrayers. Um, in business and in marriage and in everything you can imagine. Just terrible things happening. But this is because this is what they did in the infinite realm. That's what they are. We're going to visit these people in the lake of fire. Not at the start of the day of the Lord. It's going to take some time. But then, eventually, they get kind of accustomed to their environment. They're not screaming quite so much. And then, the sons of God start getting kind of restless. We forget how great things are. God sends us to the lake of fire to visit. And we come back. We're like calves out of the stall, man. We are all fresh and brand new. Ready to go. God knows when to do these things. And it... Uh, You'll see the things that I'm telling you. You seem like, how in the world could you even con contrive something like that? It's because the types of the scriptures teach it. The spirit, blood, and the water witnesses. And God gave me this a long, long time ago to help me to see the types. So there, there are many things that, that you begin to see. It's like a, a person that you know coming in the distance, but you can't quite see them yet. But you know them. But you can't see their outline first and then... They get close enough, then all of a sudden, oh, you recognize who they are. That's kind of the way the truth is, because these heavenly rewards that we're talking about, these are things that were already yours. they are things that you've already earned in the infinite realm. These are things that you're getting again until we all reach the stature that we had in the infinite realm, and then God improves it. It's going to improve on that because we're going to get into Satan stuff too. And what's great part is, when Adam stands up in the infinite realm, and he's all complete, he's going to have Satan's stones on his chest. Everybody in the realm is going to have Satan at their right hand. I'm sorry, Adam, right at their right hand. So instead of him being in the dungeon like he was, he's going to be made at the right hand. And then every one of the brethren are going to benefit from all those stones that are in his chest. Because they put, that's the reason God made Adam. And he made him unseemly. He made him somebody that looks very common, somebody that you would never think was a king. But then it's a great, it's the greatest story in the world, and nobody hardly even knows it. It's really a great story. It happens in the infinite realm, and what God's doing with one that He made to be the Lamb of God to solve what He did when He created Satan in the first place. It's told in the stories of, G of John the Baptist, Jesus Christ. It's told in the story of David. It's told in the story of Elijah. It's told in all these, and Abraham is told in all these Bible stories. And whenever we get back to the infinite realm, is whenever the brethren are going to realize that it was Adam all the time. And that's whenever they're going to break down and start crying for him. Realizing that this is what it was all about all the time. Everything's going to make perfect sense whenever we get back there. Then um, the trumpet. I don't know if we hear the trumpet or not, but the trumpet sounds. That's the one that um, is written about. It sounds off behind John in um, Revelation 1.10 because it's the last event of the day of the Lord. John can't see it. He can hear it, but he can't see it because he's standing inside the, day, the Lord's day, which is prophetic. And this mystery trumpet it's a mystery trumpet. We know it's a mystery trumpet because it's connected directly with the mystery in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, start at 51. 52 is the trumpet. It's called the last trumpet. And it's, the, it's whenever we pass through the veil that the trumpet sounds. So whether we hear it or not, I don't really know about that part. But that's the symbolism that is used in the scriptures. And it's in 1 Thessalonians 4:16, 1 Corinthians 15:52 and in Revelation 1:10. That's the one that everybody misses. Whenever you point it out to them, they go, "Oh yeah, okay." But if, whenever you tell them the trumpet in Revelation 1:10, they start scratching their head to go, "What trumpet? There's not a trumpet there. There is a trumpet there, but it's a mystery trumpet." And most people read right past it; they don't see it. So that's exactly right, Dave. We were tricked into killing Adam. Satan did, but. Satan didn't trick us. Satan tricked those incarnate here as women. Those incarnate and women tricked us. That's the thing to realize. 
that's what the teaching is. I know that it, you have to go around a couple of corners to be able to see it through the types. Um, First Timothy chapter chapter two started. What is it, about eleven? And Adam not being deceived, and then the woman being thoroughly deceived, fell into transgression. That's what the types are teaching. Um, the trumpet sound is. No, it's. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's, it's what matters is that it appears in the scriptures, and it's the thing that separates us being here from us being there. Between when the trumpet sounds, don't be surprised if all of a sudden that we're standing and looking at each other in glorified bodies with our ears ringing. I'm just saying, don't be surprised. Um, it's not, and it's easy to confuse the Greek term mysterion with something that is mysterious. But that's not what the word means. It just means something hidden that is revealed. So the truth about our mystery gospel, our mystery church, our translation to immortality, we judge the world and the angels, all these things of the Pauline epistles are part of the mystery that was hidden in God. So the prophets can't prophesy about it. They can't see it. If it's hidden in God, nobody can see it. But that's the only way Satan wouldn't see it, you see. So if they would have, Satan would have seen the same things in the infinite realm. If you can start begin to carry your thought processes back there. And whenever you're reading 1 Corinthians 2, start at 6 there. And it's talking about how we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God predestined for the ages to our glory. God originally fooled Satan in the infinite realm before he ever created the heaven and the earth. First time. Originally. He's doing it again. Here. So the only way that things happen here is if they happened before. A good reading of Ecclesiastes 1, start at uh, 9 through 11. Just three verses packed with the truth. That explains that we've already done these things over and over again, and we're going to do them again. We're going to continue doing them because as infinite gods, everything happens in the flash of an instant. There's no such thing as time. So in, inside the envelope of time and space and heaven and earth, that's where you have to do things over and over again to reproduce an infinite, an infinite result. Which of the two Gospels did D Jesus write the seven letters to the Corinthians churches? The only Gospel of the... of uh, So the churches are gathered by the Gospel of the Kingdom. If you go to Matthew 24, read verse 14, you'll see that the Gospel of the Kingdom is going to be preached and then to the whole world and then the end will come. So that is the gospel through which God gathers kingdom priests. But then they're going to be martyred. Verse 9 there, verse in chapter 24, you will be killed. They will kill you. They're all going to be killed. There's no rapture for them. They all have to die, get their heads chopped off. They stand on the sea of glass. So um, then... That was what uh, I was talking about in the video today. The eternal gospel, Revelation 14, 6, that's preached. And then those are the elect, the holy ones that we come and gather the elect. We come back with Christ. Many professing Christians don't even know that. Colossians 3, start at 1. By verse 4, you can see that whenever he is revealed, that we will be revealed with him in great glory. Because we're coming back with him. We're going to help gather those elect from the four corners of the earth. They're going to obey the gospel, the eternal gospel. That's the third gospel. I oftentimes don't get there. If you can't get people to see the two gospels, the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the grace of God, I mean, give up on trying to, to show them the eternal gospel. But there's three of them in the New Testament, three groups that are gathered. Those are the, just the three. I mean, the first one, the gospel of the grace of God, which is really the second one, right? Because the gospel of the kingdom came first. The gospel of the kingdom is for the kingdom bride priests. The gospel of the kingdom, I mean the gospel of the grace of God is for rulers and judges, body of Christ. First one's the bride, second one's the body. The third one, the eternal gospel, is for regular citizens of heaven. That's the people that Peter, John, and James intercede for. Heaven is full of people. What makes us special is we're members of Christ's body. We're members of the Lamb. So to put that in perspective, we are like 
a member of David's body in the Old Testament, the king. The priests that intercede for the people, see the people, they don't just come up and talk to the king. They talk to the priest. The priest makes intercession for them. Tells them how, how everything goes. Tells the king. The king decides. He renders the judgment. Tells the priest. The priest goes and tells them how everything shakes out. Whether they're going to be kept in the stocks for three days. I mean, that's what I would do. I wouldn't create big prisons and house people and have to feed them three hots in a cot. For what? Because they committed a crime? I'm not doing that. I'm going to beat them in front of everybody and then chain them to a post out in the middle of the square. Strip them naked and let them sit there for three days. Let them sit there for a week. Let their family take care of them. If they don't, if they don't have any family to take care of them, they're, they're, they're in bad luck. Sad shape. But after about a week, they're not going to want to come back and look at the priest and look at the king again. It's not, they're going to, their back's going to be lashed. If they do something really bad, it's going to be lashed up really bad. It's going to take them a while to heal, and they're going to be thinking twice before they do anything. I'm not a believer in the system like we have here. And whenever, if they kill somebody, they're done. They don't even get to sit down. They're led right to the, right to the uh, guillotine. Boom, you're done. Chopped off. We're not going to waste another second of time with somebody who's murdered one of the, one of the children of, the, of uh, you know, the Son of God. David on the throne, remember, every member of his kingdom is a member of his body, like his fingers. And you start cutting off the, the king's fingers, he's not going to like it. He's going to have an easy time sending him to the gallows. Okay, so uh, which of the two Gospels did he write? So the, the Gospel of the Kingdom is what gathers him. The priest. After they're gone, then it's the eternal gospel. And it seems, oh, we have five more minutes. Seems, um, I apologize, my um, sinuses are all of a sudden start to step up on me. I'm going to uh, stop for a second here. And then if you, if you have any closing um, questions, then I'll get to those, and then we'll, we'll cut her off around nine. Okay, quick break. No, actually, we're we're only one minute to the end. If um if I came back and saw questions, once again I've been oh okay, Kathy, I'm gonna do my best and uh, getting some um, good support and um there's 29. This is a brand new program and 29 subscribers. Already, even though most are not showing up to the chat, and a lot of people are really busy, so I understand. And um, this is the way that my research group started back in 2011 using Pow Talk. I mean, it was just a few people when we started, and it grew to be 360 something. 365. We had 60 administrators, and it, the room was going 24 hours a day. They were showing videos and doing all kinds of things. So if uh, if we get more interest. More people want to come, and uh, that's I would ha be happy to appoint some administrators. And you know, some people retired. We eventually we had people in the United States, and then Australia, and then Europe, and they were taking turns as administrators, keeping things going, playing videos, and all kinds of things. And then I, then I, whenever I was, whenever I knew I was going to be available, then I would tell them when I'm coming. And then big group would pile in. We'd have over 100 people in here. Not back in the day. So uh, this is this is a brand new program. This is only the third recording of our what fourth fourth or fifth meeting. So um, doesn't matter if there's if it's five people or if it's 200 people. Then um, I greatly appreciate you guys, and I um, just really love handling hearing the questions, and um, that's what God made me for been doing this for a long time from a family of ministers and seeing the mystery and the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water for so long, then um, 
God put me in a position to be able to help other people. That's really what I love to do. You know? So um, next week, 7 o'clock, right here, same time. And uh, see, GIS12, if you want to click on that link up at the top, see the website, tarot03.com, that's me. Then um, you can find out more about what's happening. There's a subscriber program, a newsletter program. The newsletter was uploaded today. You can get a new free newsletter there. Click on the link. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a link there where you can click on that. And um, then you can start going through the videos. Tons and tons of free stuff. And you want when you want more, then there are subscriptions. And uh, you become a regular member with us. You send me questions. And I, I some, like I just wrote um, Najee's response. It took about four hours to write it with diagrams and everything. And uh, that's kind of how the system works. So thank you guys again. Appreciate your support. See, it's 9.02. And... Uh, I just looked at the TV. That's it. That's silent, and it, this political st this political stuff is on. So don't get me started on that. So thank you guys a lot. Appreciate your support, and I will see you. Uh, I'll close the room now, and um, I'll uh, see you back here next Sunday. And uh, remember that you can write me anytime with these questions, and I'm happy to answer them. And then I'll put them in the newsletter to uh, you know to help other people. And uh, whatever it comes, you know, comes out next Tuesday. So thanks again, and I'm gonna go ahead and close the room down. And I, again, I appreciate your support. And um, whenever you come, please come with a list of questions that you think of during the week. Just you get get in the habit of writing them down. The more questions, the more opportunity we have to help other people through these uh, these videos and things that we're making. So thanks again, and I'll see you next week right here.